Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk about e-pharmacies and why I think e-pharmacies are the future. Because we, we got some um, interesting news today uh, from California. Blue Shield of California is dropping Caremark. Uh, and Blue Shield, of course, is a major insurer over there. And we are dropping Caremark. And Caremark is CVS's own spin on remote pharmacies. Now I'm going to call it Caremark is kind of a hybrid between a, a, a physical pickup uh, system that you can pick up in store, um, but also you can get your drugs delivered with Caremark. So they were already trying to save costs by using Caremark. And now Blue Shield is uh, going all in on cost savings and they're partnering with both Amazon's new drug initiative and Mark Cuban's cost plus drugs uh, initiative, which are both e-pharmacies, digital pharmacies. So this is this is very interesting to me because as a, as a HIMSS shareholder, I've been pounding the table on this, saying that, yes, e-pharmacies are the future, digital pharmacies, virtual pharmacies, whatever you want to call it. We don't need that many physical uh, pharmacies. And I'm, I'm going to show you the, the, the numbers uh, right now. They are, they are quite fascinating. But this is a familiar story, though. Uh, this is a story where a company like CVS cannot compete. They can't compete because they have they have old old system. They have tr structural inertia that prevents them to innovate and be competitive. This is this is what they had here, um, where you know they were trying to do both RX delivery by mail with CVS Caremark. They are they are this pro this product still still exists. They are trying to do uh, both RX delivery. So this is kind of like Mark Cuban. But you see they are, they are pairing with it pick from a network pharmacy. So this is more like the traditional system. Um, and of course, it's tough for a company like CVS, who has more than 9,000 pharmacies in the US, each with their own pharmacist. It's very, very tough for them to make a move like Mark Cuban or like Amazon and get rid of the pharmacies. They can't do that, right? These pharmacies have, have debt on them. They, they, got, they got bones, they got leases on them. Uh, they, got, they, they got a lot of, uh, of, of debt um, and they got a lot of uh, structural inertia, cultural debt, the way you operate. It's, it's very, very hard to steer a ship this size. That's why for a firm like CVS, the strategy, their strategy must follow their existing structure. So they have to offer products like this that put both together, both the network of pharmacy and also the delivery together. And because of that structure that is so expensive that they have to sustain, they are not able to offer the prices of digital pharmacies who don't have any of that legacy debt. They don't have any of that infrastructure debt that an old firm like CVS would have. And so that's why it's part of my belief that it's typically new firms. It's typically new firms that innovate and, 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 and that launch new products, new services. They, they, they typically tend to be brand new firms because old firms can't do that and if they do that there's backlash there's strikes etc etc you, you really it's really firms have a really hard time doing that and i just want to spend a second talking about this you know do we need 44,900 pharmacies in the usa or should we just order our prescriptions online Right. Do we need 6,470 blockbusters or should we just stream movies? Do we need 71,000 branches for all American banks combined? Or can we just use a digital bank on an, an app, like on, your, on our phone, a new bank on our phone? Could we just do, just do that or do we have to finance 71,000 branches? Each of them with an average seven employees, by the way. I made a separate video about, 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 about that. Or do we need 1,100 shopping malls in the USA? Or maybe we should just shop online and not have this crazy build out of, 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 of shopping malls and strip malls and other kind of stuff. Um, and of course, what do the incumbents say when you say this? The incumbent is like, well, yeah, in, if you're an incumbent pharmacist, you're going to say, well, yeah, drugs need to be explained. Never mind, you can explain drugs on an app. You, you can have a pharmacist 
you know, do a video call with whoever receives the drug, and that can be done really well on an app. You don't need to be physically present, right? Do we need uh, more than 6,000 blockbusters? Well, it's an old story. You, you know they went bankrupt, but... Uh, or should we stream movies? Do we need that? Um, well, what did they used to say in common blockbusters? Well, they used to say downloading movies takes forever. You should pick up a DVD and drop it off because downloading movie, movies just take a fortune, just take forever. Uh, entirely forgetting that high-speed internet and, and, and broadband is coming all over the U.S., right? And right now, if you look at branches, what do the what, what do the bankers say? They say, well, financial products, you know, you need advice. They need to come with advice. While, in fact, we know that the main reason why branches are still here is because cash is still used and, and thus to process that cash, you need to have the branches. But, but you know, even, even now in the banking sector, we're coming up with, with, with a cashless branches. Whereas, like, no cash at the branch. Anyways, it's uh, it's very interesting. Um, and the shopping mall argument, why, right? Why, why do the clothes sellers do you used to say? What did they used to say? Well, they used to say, well, people will never buy clothing online. You need to try clothes on. They'll never buy it online. Except most people who buy clothes online, sometimes they'll buy two sizes and they'll just return one size. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a problem. So all of these arguments get disrupted because... All of these companies get disrupted and their arguments do not hold because this is a story about deflationary forces, right? Uh, digital is deflationary. And, you know, there's more points to be said, you know, and, and governments sometimes move, move slower. But, for example, why do we still have libraries? Why can't we get books online? It's much cheaper, it's better, it's faster. It's got everything. Right, we have libraries because of inertia. Uh, public transportation in most medium cities. Well, right now it's still a tad, tad bit cheaper, assuming you place no value on your time. It's still going to be a little cheaper to take public transportation. But even that, that is going to change as soon as we have ride share and self-driving cars. You know, we, we we invested tens of billions in public transportation in cities around the world. While well, while well, you're going to have, you know self-driving cars and it, in some cities they went as far as entirely destroying the war the roads like the roads are destroyed just so that you can put a bus on there in a world where everybody's going to want personalized transportation again so you could say that right that's de deflationary it's all about deflation how about education how many physical buildings do we need to maintain in education it would be a tremendous deflationary force is if the education was mostly done online and what about the doctor's office right 70 to 80 percent of consultations can be done remotely what about offices altogether? And we know this is there may be a crisis brewing in the commercial sector because um, although there is a, 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 a spring back, like a coming back to the office because, because people uh, really missed it in 2020, even though we're going through that phase, um, it is still a fact that, that younger generations, especially Gen Z, love, love staying home, love not having to go to the office and, and, and working remotely. And you have a lot of people, especially people with families who absolutely love working remotely. So these are mega trends that are highly, highly, highly different deflationary. What I want to emphasize is whether it's these examples or that example, the, the modern way of doing it is 10 times cheaper. Every single time the modern way of doing it is 10 times cheaper. And if the modern way of doing it is 10 times cheaper, then we're likely going to do it the modern way because we have scarce resources and we don't want to waste resources um, on stuff that we could be producing cheaper. And we're producing that stuff cheaper with digital technology. And we can't fight deflationary forces. And again... This goes back to the pharmacy question. What's more logical? Is it more logical to have almost 45,000 small shop pharmacies? Or is it more logical to have a few hundred pharmacy warehouses, giant warehouses, across the USA, fully automated, that just ship the drugs to us, right? And, and by the way, Amazon is working on a shipping network. We've made tremendous improvements in shipping. You know, today in many cities, you can get two-hour delivery with Amazon. And what is it going to be, you know, how widespread is this going to be five years from now, 10 years from now? It's going to be much more widespread, much, much, much more widespread. So you have a convergence of technology. And it's a convergence of technologies that make old industries die. And today, you know, if you look at, for example, this is, this is, this is another reason why I often say on this channel that but moats, moats are, really, are really a 20th century concept. And they're not a 21st century concept um, because today it's really, really tough to keep a moat. So take, take the example of online search and online shopping together. And what online search and online shopping 
both of them both of them are needed that's the convergence uh, if you have both of those imagine the hurt that it does to businesses protected by distribution and typically a business that's protected by distribution is things like a convenience store right i.e pharmacies they are very convenience stores right or uh, things like, like like a branch like a branch for a bank why would you choose a bank uh, in the past and not go anywhere else because they had the biggest network of branches right so that's why you would want to go into one branch because you know you would have access to it everywhere those advantages those moats are dying with technology they are entirely dying with technology because Let's take the example of buying drugs, and you're trying you're trying to minimize your out of pocket costs. You're trying to minimize your copay, and so you want to get your drugs the cheapest. In the past, you didn't have Google, so you could not know what an other pharmacy was charging. You could not know the real price. Today, you have perfect information. You have Google. You can just look it up. And in the past, you know, you even if you knew in the past that somebody sold it cheaper, you couldn't have it because you couldn't order it online. T today, you can order it online. You, you can have it. So this is a convergence of both of them, which makes old moats like, oh, we're the biggest pharmacy network in the U.S. We're convenient with everywhere. That moat dies when a user has both the Internet on their phone conveniently as well as two-hour shipping. That moat is entirely dead in my view. And so that's why I always say, always say the only moat is innovation and how fast you can move. You know, and clearly CVS is not able to move very fast because, frankly, the right move for CVS would be to close probably 9,000 branches overnight. They should close them all down, close all of the pharmacies down overnight, right, and move the business model and change the business model. That's what an agile company should do, except it's not possible. It's not possible for a company that is entrenched in its ways for, 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 for decades and decades to do that change. It's not possible. It's not possible for them to even consider that change. You can't change like that. Um, and this is why, and this is where I talk about HIMSS. This is why I'm so passionate about the company HIMSS. I know I've been covering it a lot on the channel lately. I'm sorry about that if you don't like HIMSS. Um, but the, the disruption of, of pharmacies is, is, is a big one that I want to discuss. Um, HIMSS fits this trend really, really well. HIMSS is what? What is HIMSS? It's an e-pharmacy. It ships prescriptions, both generic prescriptions, actually a few brand prescriptions too, as well as personalized prescriptions, right? So this is in comparison to the traditional pharmacies that charge you a lot, like CVS, right? CVS that, that charge you more. So, 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 so you save big compared to going through a traditional pharmacy. But what else, what else does, 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 uh, does HIMSS do? So to access the e-pharmacy of HIMSS, you have to go through their own doctors, their e-doctors. Now, HIMSS also saves on the doctors because compared to traditional health system who have to have expensive medical office building and physical buildings, etc., expensive grounds, HIMSS doesn't have any of that, right? It's a digital platform. So they save a lot of money on that. So they save money on pharmacy. They save money on the doctors. And it passes on those savings to the user such that it saves money on the rent-seeking of insurance companies. And this is not a pejorative term. This is how insurance companies work. They rent seek, right? Uh, no insurance is needed. So they save more money because you don't have to pay for the margin of the insurance company. And it's so striking to me. It's so striking because if you look at HIMSS, most complete treatments, let's say you go, them, go to them with one specific issue when I get it treated, most specific treatments can be had for $50 a month. And that include the doctor visits, Plus the drugs, both are included. This is so disruptive. Like in the, in the regular world, you have primary physician, 125. Specialist, 175. The drugs for 90 days, and then the specialist wants to see you again, 175 again. We are at 10x. We are at 10x cheaper for hims. You cut out all of the middlemen, I mean, and you create tremendous opportunity because you cut these out. You know, and it, it is cheaper. And, and, and a lot of people will come back often and say, well, is it really, really cheaper? You know, uh, how high are copays in the US? Well, first of all, I can tell you they're pretty high. Like I've, I've had prescriptions uh, where uh, I think one time I had a prescription, uh, a drug for, for a minor thing. And I, th I think my copay was like 70 bucks. And, and I have top insurance, like really, really top not insurance. And my, my, my copay was like 90, sorry, 70 bucks uh, because they wanted, I mean, the doctor prescribed like the name brand drug or something. Anyways, um, is it really cheaper? Well, let me finish with, with that. Is it really cheaper? Um, there's a nice way to know that. 
and 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 this is my first time bringing this up in one of my, one of my videos. It's the flexible spending account. So, in 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 the U.S., out of pocket costs for drugs and, and for healthcare in general are so high that the government put this tax exempt uh, spending account, they call it, which is sort of a savings account, but you can't save year after year. It's, it's a savings account that you have to spend the money at the end of the year, essentially is what a flexible spending account is. But it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's tax exempt. And so they created this to help with the issue um, of out-of-pocket cost expenses because they're like, you know, uh, those insurance companies you know, it'd be nice if you could have pre-tax out-of-pocket costs. It'd be nice if your if your copays were out of were, were pre-tax. So they created this, and of course, when created this, the government estimated, you know, what would be a, a, a fair or reasonable amount for a reasonable person in out-of-pocket costs. And they came up with an amount for the FSA, keeping in mind that most FSA fill up to the max. They took the amount of three thousand and fifty a year, and they are trying to adjust that to the to the to the use of the client, um, so to the use of a of a taxpayer. So they said, okay, well, we estimate that the taxpayer could spend three thousand dollars a year on uh, out of pocket costs. Well, three thousand dollars a year on out of pocket costs, which what which which is what the government tells us is is the, the fair amount. That is two hundred and fifty four dollars a month. $254 a month, that would give you five treatments with HIMSS. Five of them, right? And most people don't have five treatments. So to me, to me, to me, HIMSS is really, really cutting out the middleman, i.e. the pharmacy, i.e. the health system that has and employs the doctors and the insurance itself. And it is doing this at a cheaper cost than even the out-of-pocket uh, and copay costs. And, and I will conclude this video by saying, and this is, this is the nature of, of, of modern-day companies, modern-day companies create tremendous savings for their users so, such that their users you know, literally flock to the business and have no choice but to use the business. And when you look at the growth number of HIMSS, I mean, you don't get 80% growth year over year just like that, right? The product resonates when you get 80% growth year over year, starting at a base of almost a billion dollars in sales anyways um that's because the product is that good um and, and i'll conclude with this question will blue cross of california share the 500 million savings that it get, that it's getting from reimbursing cost cost plus drugs now and amazon as opposed to caremark will they share those savings with their insurees and i don't mean all of them right cost savings it's fine to share them equally you can share them between employees insurees and uh, shareholders, I don't have an issue with that. But uh, my guess is that is that insurers will see none of it. That's what, what my guess is. Uh, my, my guess is it will be top management and shareholders who see most of those savings. So I doubt it. Anyways, um, this is not investment advice. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. Appreciate your likes. Appreciate your subscribes. Have a wonderful day.